this Gordian knot is, could be summarized uh, uh, very simply. We need to produce cells that are capable to, um, to renew, rejuvenate some organ and tissues. And this is what the conference is about. So um, we can definitely use embryonic stem cell lines. We know that the human embryo has this capacity to, to uh, provide cells that are capable of renewing very fast. You also have adult stem cells. Each one of us have some stem cells, uh, have some, uh, stem cells in your own organs. And uh, surprisingly enough, uh, very, very few people are talking, I'm talking about Western countries, probably not in Singapore because the case of Singapore is very peculiar, but um, the case of umbilical cochlear stem cell uh, remains quite discreet. And this is one question I would like to ask you is, why are we talking uh, so, so softly about this, so discreetly about this? Um, if we have to, if we, if, we, if we need to summarize in a very uh, simplistic uh, way uh, the revolution of biotechnologies, I would, I would like to come back to the root of uh, biomedicine. During uh, the Greek antiquity, Hippocrates and many other great uh, founders of, uh, um, of medicine um, referred to uh, the different uh, gods, especially uh, Asclepios, who was the, the god of, um, of medicine. Asclepios had two daughters, one were named uh, Hagia and the second one Panacea. Hagia was the goddess of uh, prevention, prophylaxia, and uh, Panacea the goddess of uh, the universal cure. Actually, we are today pioneering in, in those two fields and reinventing the new, new forms of prophylaxia and new forms of universal cures. Prophylaxia deals with predictive medicine. You need to anticipate to prevent the disease, uh, to declare its uh, symptoms, and this is what genetic testing is about. Uh, identifying the genetic mutation within uh, your genetic profile, so you can anticipate uh, the, disease, the appearance of the disease and try to use, in fact, cures like uh, those that Panacea was able to create. And actually, uh, the regenerative medicine deals with those universal cures in a sense that um, stem cells are capable of producing a very wide range of different cells. So there is nothing new in this debate, nothing very new. Everything pre-existed in the Greek antiquity. However, the techniques uh, were uh, got more and more sophisticated throughout the, the history. And uh, during the antiquity, uh, because we are talking about body parts, dysfunctions, uh, the first sort of uh, replacement of uh, organic replacement was the walking stick. This is a sort of body part. When you have a dysfunction, this is probably the, the origin of, uh, of uh, the notion of uh, engraftment or uh, of replacement of uh, an organ. Then we, we had the, the development of prosthesis, orthopedics, uh, during the the years uh, 17, uh, 70, we, we had the, um, you know, the, the cyborg, the six billion dollar man, you know, the, the half uh, um, sort of, the, the organs that we created were uh, produced through uh, um, like machines, like, you know, the, we, we had some uh, great uh, movies about, uh, you know, the Terminator, half a machine, half a human being. This is the, the 70s. During the 80s, uh, we tried, we attempted to perform um, more sophisticated things because the other failed. And because it was too complex to create you know, um, successful engraftments with uh, um, external organs, um, which were not made of flesh, but uh, made of uh, electronic components. We decided to use uh, organs from dead bodies. 
that were replaced by, by surgery. And it was actually very difficult to create those banks. There was a, um, a great scarcity, which, were, which was absolutely uh, dramatic even today. And uh, we saw also a traffic of, uh, of organ throughout the world, especially in China, where you had some smuggling. And um, this is uh, probably uh, the dark side of uh, this period. During the 90s, um, the, the developments of, uh, of genetics uh, enabled um, physicians to work on a new form of therapy, the gene therapy. The question was not to replace an organ, but the gene itself. The gene is inside the cell, inside the nucleus. So <laughs> those are really tiny, tiny engraftments which makes which make the, the engraftment, all the, the transplantation, all the more complex. Because we need to find the vehicle and the vehicle to carry out the good sequence of DNA and then make sure that the, re the, re the replacement of the deficient gene is correctly inserted at the right place at the right time. And this is why gene therapy is extremely complex and very difficult to um, monitor even today. Uh, actually, uh, we are now uh, witnessing the, the advent of a new era. And this era is uh, the stem cell era, the regenerative medicine. And uh, because it is so difficult uh, to insert genes, which are so tiny pieces uh, of uh, the DNA, we are now attempting to engraft larger pieces, cells. And the cells are all the more um, easier to, to transplant because first, the capacity of the cell is duplicate on its own. It is programmed to renew itself through duplication. Second, the quality of those cells is to differentiate. Those cells are extremely naive. So there is some plasticity, and they can, throughout the days and, and the weeks, differentiate to a certain tissue. And there is a programmation of this differentiation process. So actually, we don't know exactly how it works, but the cell knows how it works. So transplanting a cell is all the more easier because it's bigger, and because the cell is programmed to communicate with other cells and the other cell, the other cells around in the environment, in the tissue, are indicating to the transplanted cells what is the what is the tissue, what is the function of this tissue, and how does the new cell have to react to this new environment. So we need to be to remain extremely humble uh, about um, those techniques because we don't know how it works. This is just a very new uh, era uh, we are just uh, uh, unveiling today. And uh, this humility has to guide also uh, our um, hopes, but um, uh, also uh, strengthen the efforts to, to develop this new field. All right, if we just uh, display uh, the overview of uh, regenerative medicine, we have the means and we have the end. The means are listed here. We have uh, three different means to reach one end. The end is cell therapy, cure the patient. This is the final goal of regenerative, uh, regenerative medicine. Curing the patient is the central goal. Now, what type of stem cell can we use to reach that goal? Embryonic stem cells, they are qualified as pluripotent. The pluripotency com comes from the human embryo. And the human embryo has this capacity to develop itself very fast. Actually, the cells are differentiating extremely fast. If differentiation is a way of getting whole, we could put it this way that the embryo is probably uh, the form of human lives that uh, are getting old the faster the entire lifespan. 